Pardon me, good sir. Could you point me in the direction of some of your town's hippest night spots? Not down there, apparently. Hmm. Turn back. Yeah, I guess so. Looks like the thing to do. What exactly do we mean when we call some place a ghost town? The ones I've visited have mostly been ramshackle clusters of old West-era buildings in the lonesome deserts of Nevada or California, where sweaty tourists listen to tour guides telling stories about bow-legged lawmen, psychotic outlaws, and hills riddled with lost gold mines and pack mule corpses. One time in Virginia City, Nevada, one of America's most well-preserved ghost towns, I even got to sit on Mark Twain's former box toilet in Mark Twain's former newspaper office. But if we're going to get nitpicky about word choice, and Lord knows I usually do, towns like Virginia City and Bodie are really more like corpses than ghosts, the physical form remaining like an abandoned shell after the life and spirit have departed it. Centralia, Pennsylvania is a ghost town. It is an unseen presence, a hovering residue of departed life that can be felt in the empty, ruined streets where families once shared lives together. The houses and places of business are gone now, but if you listen closely in the dark, overgrown hollows that once were neighborhoods, you can almost hear the merry laughter of children at play, the sound of beloved television shows drifting through open windows on late summer evenings, the barking of excited dogs in yards, and all the other sounds of life so hauntingly conspicuous now in their absence. There are a few conflicting theories about exactly how the trouble started in Centralia, but what's known is that in 1962, a trash fire in the town landfill worked its way into an old mine shaft, igniting a vein of anthracite coal. The underground fire spread through the network of mining tunnels. All efforts to excavate and extinguish it failed. The Centralia mine fire is still burning underground there to this day, and experts say it will keep burning for the foreseeable future, maybe even for hundreds of years. It doesn't feel so hot down there to me. At first, life in Centralia went on as usual above the ground, but then some things started to go askew. The fuel tanks under a local gas station were discovered to have heated up to over 900 degrees Fahrenheit, nearly combusting. Residents began developing health problems as their basements filled with noxious gases. Then, in 1981, the ground opened up and swallowed a 12-year-old boy who hung on, terrified, suspended above a deep pit of smoke and fire, his sneakers no doubt scraping shingles on the very rooftops of hell, until he was finally pulled to safety. Such sinkholes became commonplace around town. Residents tell stories of hapless deer and neighborhood cats devoured by sudden pits of fire and brimstone. And it wasn't long after the incident with the boy when the state of Pennsylvania began urging residents to leave, offering to buy their homes. Many Centralians accepted the offers. As the fire burned on below and the town's population dwindled, the government began to put pressure on the holdouts, seizing all real estate in town under eminent domain in 1992. All the buildings in town were condemned, and Route 61 was rerouted to bypass Centralia, which was stripped of its official town name and zip code. There were those residents who didn't believe the situation was as dire as the scientists claimed, or who, for reasons of their own, resisted leaving their homes. After two decades of legal battles, eight residents won the right to remain in Centralia, but they're forbidden to ever sell their property or to bequeath it to anyone when they die, so it won't be too long before no one lives in Centralia at all. I didn't expect to run into other tourists in Centralia, but then there they were, with license plates from Indiana, New York, Ohio, all over the place. The only thing any of the visitors seemed interested in was Centralia's graffiti highway, the closed-off section of Route 61 that used to pass through town. As the name suggests, every inch of the pavement, guardrails, and surrounding vegetation has been spray-canned with total abandon. It's a hell of a scene. 
tourists walking dogs, dour-looking young folks cruising on ATVs, BMX bikers trying to jump the distorted, shattered sections of asphalt heaved up by the fire, a young couple selling soda, water, and hot dogs from the bed of a pickup truck offered me a drink for Ringo Dog. The government won't issue business permits in Centralia anymore, so it's catch as catch can. The graffiti highway is something to see, but Banksy, it ain't. All the usual modern-day iconography can be found. Sports teams, Jesus stuff, declarations of sweethearts' undying love, terms of endearment, lots of dicks, pot leaves, pot leaves with dicks in the center of them. Some small percentage was appropriately weird and creepy, and some was kind of pretty. This whole surrealistic technicolor exhibit is framed by mangy copses of dismal woods that look tailor-made for exactly the sort of classic teenage Satan worship older folks have been imagining with paranoid horror since the 80s. Much of this gnarled greenery has been spray-painted, too. The part of Centralia I found the most interesting, and which nobody else really seemed to care about seeing, were the vacant, overgrown former neighborhoods adjacent to the highway. There is something really spooky about the streets that now lead nowhere. The heaps of blackened slag where the fires jacked up the pavement, the surprisingly well-maintained cemeteries, whose upkeep is funded by donation boxes on the gates, and whose neatly trimmed lawns and hedges conceal the fact that the departed are presumably being slow-cooked like pork shoulders below. It's a warm day. I know, buddy. It's just the spirits of the dead. It's only... But what of the living? Seven people apparently still live in Centralia. The one house I stumbled upon looked picturesque and well-maintained, but the signage seemed to suggest that visitors were not encouraged, so I abandoned thoughts of getting an interview and kept a respectful distance. Still, of all that inspires my imagination about Centralia, I'm fascinated by these remaining residents most of all. These folks so determined to stay in their homes that they're willing to sit in their houses as the fire burns under them and the town dies around them. The story of Centralia is, among other things, the archetypal story of the loss of home and of the identity rooted in our sense of home, of place. This is where I found the song for this episode. I've taken the usual poetic license, of course, in telling a story about what staying behind in a vanishing town might feel like, but the history in the lyrics is fact-checkable, and a lot of the sentiments expressed actually came from an interview with some of the remaining Centralians themselves that I stumbled on in my research. This much we can say for sure. Given that it no longer has a zip code or a postal service, you can't send letters from Centralia. Thought I'd take this chance to ride you out some business in a town that's got a post office. There's so much I've meant to say ever since you moved away. It's been so long, you probably have forgotten me. I never blamed you much. Doing what you did Heard the commonwealth folks Made you a nice offer I'd have sold them my place too If I had brains like you Cause where I am is nowhere now Guess I'm nobody too No train stop Michigan Central Station Nobody wants to swim the Salton Sea And you can't send letters from Centralia So I guess I won't be writing much Marie Oh, 
were just kids back in 1962. Playing Red Rover while the devil bought the place downstairs. I really had a thing for you. Don't think you even knew. Some fires are destined to stay buried. Valentine's Day you were When that dumb bosky kid fell down the sinkhole Brought the government around Trying to erase our town Home is home and hell with all that hell below the ground No train stop Michigan Central Station Nobody wants to swim in Salton Sea And you can send letters from Centralia So I guess I won't be writing much, Marie I don't believe it's half as urgent as they say it is I cough sometimes, a cat or two gets barbecued They knocked all them houses down And the weeds took over the ground To walk the streets you'd never know This used to be our town well, Marie, I only thought I'd drop a line I don't think I'll make it back to Ashland for some time Going back from where I came No zip code and no name A ghost inside a ghost town Watching steam rise from the drain no train stop, Michigan Central Station. Nobody wants to swim the Salton Sea. And you can't send letters from Centralia. So I guess I won't be writing much more. No, I guess I won't be writing much more.